Agenda 21 is kind of a code name for a master plan originated at the United Nations to change the political and economic system of the world to one of total collectivism. And in order to do that, people must not be allowed to have independence. They must be dependent on the state for everything. Otherwise, they won't, they won't be easily controlled by the state. That means they can't have private property, mostly. They cannot have land of their own. They have to live in, preferably, high-rise apartments uh, that are provided to them by the state as a benefit, so to speak. Oh, good, we got a free apartment. But they want, these people at the top want all humans to be dependent on the largesse of the state. That means that they don't want anybody living out in the boonies. Anybody that's got a couple of acres of land and his own water supply and can grow his own food and that kind of thing, or have some sheep or some chickens, these people are a threat to the collectivist society because they aren't going to go to the politicians and say, please feed me, please clothe me, please give me shelter. They tend to be independent. That's the secret behind Agenda 21. They want people out of the country. They want corporations out there growing all the food and that kind of thing, but they don't want anybody living out there because that way they cannot be controlled. In order to control mankind, we have to get them all into the big cities. We have to rack them up and stack them up, get them dependent on the state for their food, their shelter, their electrical power, their water, everything. That's the dirty secret behind Agenda 21. This is a plan that was agreed to by 179 nations. It's called the Agenda for the 21st Century. It's a totalitarian state to being developed right now all over the world. It is the inventory and control plan. Inventory and control of all land, all water, all minerals, all plants, all animals, all construction, all means of production, all food, all energy, all information and all human beings in the world. And this is a plan that was agreed to by 179 nations back in 1992. It's a United Nations plan. It's called the Agenda for the 21st Century. And so many of us around the world think that, um, well, sustainable development, it just sounds so great. Isn't it about recycling and creative reuse and uh, and creating energy and food resources for everyone? And the answer is no, it really is not. It's about moving populations into city centers, concentrated city centers, and clearing them out of the rural areas. All systems have to be brought into harmony in order to control them all. Because when systems don't meet, when they're, when they're out of balance or not in sync with one another, they can't be controlled centrally. And the goal of Agenda 21 is one world government and total control from a central unit. Every nation that signed on to Agenda 21 has its, uh, its local Agenda 21 plan. People in the United States are completely unaware of this. If I go out and talk about this, the United States press will attacks me and calls me which is it's totally ridiculous. It is a but it's not a theory. It's a fact. The three pillars of United Nations Agenda 21 are economy, ecology, and equity, the three E's. And everyone's sort of thinks that they know what that means, the idea of social equity. It must mean that, well, everyone's going to have access to clean water and clean air, and uh, no one's uh, property is going to be used as a dumping ground because they are at a poverty level. But really what social equity is about is about impoverishing huge portions of the population and bringing down uh, develop the developed nations everything that we're looking at now is destined to collapse our economies. It's a totalitarian state to being developed right now all over the world. And what major corporations want in this 
development is to be able to uh, to have move, full movement of of, uh, of workers without borders or boundaries, to be able to move their goods through without regulations, and to reduce wages. And so this is the goal. So this is what you find with social equity. And of course, economy and uh, ecology is about, these are the three circles, economy, ecology, and social equity. And where they meet in the center is balance. But really that balance is a communitarian balance. So it's not balance of well-being of the people. What it is is it's a balance for corporations so that they can exploit and control and have populations in an area, in tightly packed, dense areas, so that they can be surveilled and managed. And this is what that balance looks like as far as the development of a totalitarian state is. The mainstream media is owned by five major corporations and you're not going to get this information from the mainstream press. So you need to be your own press. You need to educate yourself. You need to get out there and educate your neighbors, your community, your real community. You need to help your children understand that they're being indoctrinated from pre-kindergarten to postgraduate school. All of us have a responsibility to ourselves and to others. This is true community, to work for personal freedom. And always remember that even though we work as a group, if we do work as a group, we're all individuals in those groups. And we answer only to ourselves. And this is essential. It's essential as, as, as free human beings. This is what we are. We are free. And we need to continue to be free. And I do believe that we will win, but we have to become aware that there is a fight and then make our friends and our neighbors and our community aware as well and work together. What I intend to tell you tonight is something that you have never been able to learn from any other source. And what I tell you now concerns not only you, but your children and the survival of this country and Christianity. I'm not here just to dish up a few facts to send up your blood pressure, but I'm here to tell you things that will help you preserve what you consider the most sacred thing in the world. They're pulling the damn stuff down. That's the thing. They're creating censorship to prevent people from actually getting the facts. It's never been more obvious and more blatant. This has been going on all along, but now it's so in your face. And this is what they won't tell you because the media shuts all that information down. A lot of people just don't want to do this. It's one of the most terrifying concepts that has ever come into their mind. This should not be done. And this is what the cult doesn't want, because once you do this, now the dots are not dots anymore. We're at one of those most critical times right now. This is how a few can actually control the mass. Because you can't do it with tanks in the streets and soldiers at the door, there's too many people. It's like trying to physically herd sheep together. You can't do it. You'd need a, a man, maybe more than one, for every sheep to do it physically. You have to do it through the mind. Either through fear or through conditioning people to think the way you want them to think. To Jews and can't run their nations properly, for their sake and ours, we need to abolish their governments and replace them with a single government. This will take a long time and involve much bloodshed, but it's for a good cause. Here's what we'll need to do. Place our agents and helpers everywhere. Take control of the media and use it in propaganda for our plans. Start fights between different races, classes, and religions. Use bribery, threats, and blackmail to get our way. Use Freemasonic lodges to attract potential public officials. 
appeal to successful people's egos, appoint puppet leaders who can be controlled by blackmail, replace royal rule with socialist rule, then communism, then despotism, abolish all rights and freedoms except the right by force by us, sacrifice people, including Jews sometimes, when necessary, eliminate religion, replace it with science and materialism, Control the education system to spread deception and destroy intellect. Rewrite history to our benefit. Create entertaining distractions. Corrupt minds with filth and perversion. Encourage people to spy on one another. Keep the masses in poverty and perpetual labor. Take possession of all true wealth, property, and especially gold. Use gold to manipulate the markets, causing depressions, etc. Introduce a progressive tax on wealth. Replace sound investment with speculation. Hmm. Make long-term interest-bearing loans to governments. Hmm. Give bad advice to governments and everyone else. Eventually, the Goyim will be so angry with their governments because we'll blame them for the resulting mess that they'll gladly have us take over. We will then appoint a descendant of David to be the king of the world, and the remaining Goyim will bow down and sing his praises. Everyone will live in peace and obedient order under his glorious rule. The Jewish Bolsheviks implemented a policy known as collectivization. By collectivization, they could take away the peasants' land in the name of the state. This was what Marx himself described as the essence of communism, to abolish private property. In early 1930, over 91% of the agricultural land was collectivized. The communists were taking every good from the peasants. All weapons of the civilians were also confiscated by the state. He ordered NKVD to confiscate all grain, all food from the series. By doing that, he knew he is condemning them to death. Картошку, свеклу, это самое капусту, соленая капуста в это в это в бочке с бочкой. Куда забираешь? Садить же нужно. Нужно вот посадочным никто не забирать и все. During the periods of 1921 to 1922, 1932 to 1933, and 1946 to 1947, the Jewish Bolshevik regime deliberately mechanized three series of genocidal man-made famines aimed at starving farmers in Ukraine, Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Russia. Millions died a slow death and people resorted to eating grass and some even to cannibalism. This real holocaust is today referred to as the Holodomor. Encyclopedia Britannica estimates around 8 million people, 5 million of them Ukrainian, were starved to death by the Stalin Kaganovich famine alone. And the three Holodomor genocides together resulted in a death toll of 16.5 million. Russian historian Alexander Solzhenitsyn estimated that between 1917 to 1958, the Jewish Bolshevik regime managed to exterminate up towards 60 million Europeans, including victims of the forced collectivization, the hunger, large purges, expulsions, banishment, executions, and mass deaths at gulags. Industrial scale murders like these are an essential part of communist theory. With these famines, Lenin, Stalin, Kaganovich, and all their Jewish agents destroyed any remaining resistance to the communists. 
An order from Lenin and Trotsky, the Red Terror was first announced by the Jew Jakob Sverdlov. Lenin stipulated that three quarters of mankind may die if necessary to ensure the other quarter for communism. Lenin even outlined the purpose for the famines by stating, destroying the peasant economy and driving the peasant from the country to the town, the famine creates a proletariat. Lenin also regarded Europeans as animals. It is precisely now and only now when in the starving regions people are eating human flesh and hundreds if not thousands of corpses are littering the roads that we can and therefore must carry out the confiscation of church valuables with the most savage and merciless energy not stopping short of crushing any resistance he continued the greater the number of representatives of the reactionary clergy and reactionary bourgeoisie we succeed in executing for this reason the better it's one of the things that um i think uh, opens up so much to what's really going on in the world is when we realize that the same force controls apparently different organizations. So this um, giving our mind away, giving our power away, has actually created the vehicle for the few to control the world. And that vehicle is overwhelmingly what I call hassle-free zones, call them comfort zones as well. Every dogma, economic dogma, political dogma, crikey, you could stay here all night. Each of those dogmas and societies in general are all hassle-free zones. By that I mean there is a very narrow area of acceptable thought and behavior, the norm, which if you conform to it, you're left alone. You're hassle-free. No one calls you mad. No one calls you dangerous. No one gives you a hard time for the crime of being different if you conform. If you start to think, well, actually, you know, I've got a mind of my own and it's a unique mind and therefore I'm going to have my unique truth and my unique view of me and life and everything. You start to get very dangerously close to the edge of the hassle-free zone and eventually if you keep going, you step outside of it. At that point, he's mad, he is. She's, what strange she is. He's dangerous, he is. Oh. And most people don't want that hassle. They don't want to be treated like that. In other words, what the hassle-free zone says is reality. And there are, there are several key mind manipulation techniques which are very, very powerful propaganda tools. The most effective and the most powerful, and it's used on us all the time, is something I call problem-reaction-solution. It's a mind manipulation technique that avoids not only opposition to what is the goal of the manipulators, it actually manipulates people to demand they do what they want to do anyway. You know, if Americans ever know, ever know that Israel did this, they're going to scrub them off the earth and they're not going to give a rat's ass, forgive my language, what the cost is. They are not going to care. They will do it. Tell them. Alan, you and they, know, and uh, they should, and they should, and they Alan. should. The Zionists ha are playing this as, as truly an all-or-nothing exercise. Mm -hmm. Because if they, if they lose this one, that's it. if the American people ever realize what's right. happened, mm -hmm. they're done. That's it. You know, I have one grandparent who's Jewish. So it's, by it's, talking... It's not, it's, not, it's not only a matter of blowing our cover. If, if, if Americans ever truly understand that, they're history. You know, it'll be a bloody, brutal war, and they're gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this is it's not even going to be a close contest. Well, and they and they know that, and what what they what they understand, I think, as well, is that their leverage is on the political appointments. This proves that socialism, Marxism, communism, and Zionism, in fact, share the same roots, although they travel different paths, they have the same common goal, domination of the world. There's a reason for this, there's a reason education sucks, and it's the same reason that it will never, ever, ever be fixed. It's never going to get any better, don't look for it, be happy with what you got. Because the owners of this country don't want that. I'm talking about the real owners now.
The real owners, the big wealthy business interests that control things and make all the important decisions. Forget the politicians. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. They own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the state houses, the city halls. They got the judges in their back pockets. And they own all the big media companies, so they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls. They, they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying, lobbying to get what they want. Well, we know what they want. They want more for themselves and less for everybody else. But I'll tell you what they don't want. They don't want a population of citizens capable of critical thinking. They don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking. They're not interested in that. That doesn't help them. That's against their interests. That's right. They don't want people who are smart enough to sit around the kitchen table and figure out how badly they're getting fucked by a system that threw them overboard 30 fucking years ago. They don't want that. You know what they want? They want obedient workers. Obedient workers. People who are just smart enough to run the machines and do the paperwork and just dumb enough to passively accept all these increasingly shittier jobs with the lower pay, the longer hours, the reduced benefits, the end of overtime, and the vanishing pension that disappears the minute you go to collect it. And now they're coming for your social security. Security money. They want your fucking retirement money. They want it back so they can give it to their criminal friends on Wall Street. And you know something? They'll get it. They'll get it all from you sooner or later because they own this fucking place. It's a big club and you ain't in it. And it's happening all the time. I, once you see this technique and how it works, you watch the news and read the newspapers in a completely different light because you start to see it happening. It works like this. You start by secretly creating a problem in the world and making sure someone else is blamed for it in the public arena, in the public mind. It could be a run on a currency, it could be a government collapse. The problem's created secretly. You then use the media, which isn't difficult, to wind up public opinion in relation to your manufactured problem to the point where public opinion utters the classic words, something must be done, this can't go on, which is always, always followed by, give my power away, what are they gonna do about it? And at that point, those who created the problem and got someone else to be blamed for it, wound up that public reaction, then openly in the public arena, in the parliaments of the world, uh, on the, in the newspapers and on the television, offer the solutions to the problems they have created. And in doing so, they get vast numbers of people to demand what they want to do anyway. If you want more cameras in the streets, crikey, they're going up all over the place in Britain. If you want more cameras in the streets, you want a more armed police force, you want more authoritarian laws, greater erosions of freedom, and you want the public to demand you do it, then get the public frightened of crime. Either let, um, society break down so there is more crime or emphasize crime to be worse than it really is in some areas get people frightened and the first thing people do when they're in fear about something is they look for someone out there to protect them from what they're frightened of so get people frightened that they're going to be burgled and they'll demand you take the freedoms away they'll demand cameras in the streets and more authoritarian laws the goal of this manipulation and has been for a very long time is to get the world population to see as a good idea or the only option in given circumstances, circumstances that are manipulated into place, the creation of a one world government to which nation states would be principalities, administrative units, a world central bank which would administer all financial transactions on the planet, a world currency which wouldn't be coins and notes it would be merely electronic cashless society for which there are fundamental implications for freedom a world army under centralized control with nation state uh, armies uh, dismantled under the justification of seeking peace and a microchipped population linked to a global computer the latter of which sounds bizarre to many people on first hearing except that we are ridiculously close to it and the technology already exists the way that this can be done with a very few people, at the peak, that is, is because if you look at every organization today, a university, a school, a government, a secret society, anything, a multinational company, business of any kind, 
They're structured as a pyramid. The pyramid is the structure of society today. But at the moment, we have the hierarchy, the pyramid, which works like this. In any organization, uh, you've got a very, very few people at the peak of the pyramid. That very few people know exactly what that organization's about, what its real agenda is, what it's really trying to achieve. The further you come down from that peak in any organization, you're meeting more and more and more people who know less and less and less and less about what the organization's really about. They only know their part keeping from everyone else in the pyramid how what they're doing in apparent innocence links in with what other people are doing in apparent innocence to produce a very sinister pattern. So every one of these institutions that control the direction of the world and our daily lives is a pyramid. The banking system is a pyramid. You go into the local bank, the person you meet across the counter won't even know what's going on in the bank manager's office behind them, let alone what's going on at board level and, and higher. So the banking system is a pyramid going to a peak. So is the global media and so on. And there is a global pyramid within which all these work, in which the peaks of all these individual pyramids, banking, uh, business, media, etc., fuse into one peak. And up there, it's speculated by many people there perhaps may be no more than 13 families, 13 people at the peak, pervading down through these different levels the same basic policy, which is pushing the world towards more and more centralization of power. Win, lose, or draw, you need to choose a side. Ring a ring a rosy as the light declines. I remember Dublin City in the rare old times. Raised on songs and stories, heroes of renown. The passing tales and glories That once was Dublin town The hallowed halls and houses The haunting children's rhymes That once was Dublin city In the rare old times Ring a ring a rosy as the light declines. I'll remember Dublin City in the rare old times. My name it is Sean Dempsey, as Dublin as could be. Born hard and late in Pimlico In a house that ceased to be By trade I was a cooper Lost out to redundancy Like my house that fell to progress My trade's a memory And I courted Peggy Dignan As pretty as you please A rogue and child of Mary From the rebel liberties I lost her to a student chap With skin as black as coal when he took her off to Birmingham, she took away my soul. Ring a ring a rosy as the light declines. I'll remember Dublin City in the rain. The 
my years have made me bitter The gargle dims me brain Cause Dublin keeps on changing And nothing seems the same The pillar and the met have gone The royal long since pulled down As the grey unyielding concrete Makes the city of my town Ring a ring a rosy As the light declines I'll remember Dublin City in the red moment that we are opposed to the colonization, colonization of Ireland because we never asked for it and we don't want it. Well, sweet Anna Liffey, I can no longer stay and watch the nude glass cages that spring up along the cave. My mind's too full of memories Too old to hear new chimes I'm a part of what was Dublin In the rare old times Ring a ring a rosy As the light declines I'll remember Dublin City in the rare old times. Ring a ring a rosy as the light declines. I remember Dublin City. There's your answer.